Why are we doing this? Weather's breaking. We could leave. I, I thought we was lying low. Yeah. Come on. What do you want from me, Jose? I just don't want any more folks to die, Dutch. We're living, Jose. We're living. Look at me. We're living. Even you. But we need money. Everything we have is in Blackwater. You fancy heading back there? No. Listen, Dutch, I ain't trying to undermine you. I just... I just want to stick to the plan, which was to lie low, then head back out west. Now, suddenly we're about to rob a train. What if Dutch was killed during the failed ferry job back in Blackwater? And what if, as a result of Dutch's untimely demise, Hosea had to take charge of the Vanderlyn Gang, a gang that may well have been known as the Matthews Gang from that point forward, as many gangs took the names of their leaders at that time, something that's apparent through the names of the Vanderlyn Gang, the Adriscolls, and even the Buller Twins as some examples. Or, a better question is, would there even still be a gang to refer to? This is gonna be an interesting what if video, especially for me, because if I can be honest, when I was originally asked how Hosea could be the leader, or at least the sole leader of the gang, I thought Hosea would not really be capable of it. Now hear me out. The reason why I thought that was because I was just comparing Hosea's position to that of Dutch's and the different styles in leadership and approach to trying to get the gang out of a bad situation. I made the mistake of taking Hosea's approach of lying low and conning versus outright robbing as being weak and incapable of demanding enough respect from all of the Vanderlyn gang members to really hope that the gang would stay together. I also had the mistake of thinking that Hosea didn't have a brutal side to him, making it possible for the gang to ultimately be walked over if it wasn't for Arthur ensuring that that would not happen. But was I wrong? And it shows how little I pay attention to the story sometimes because there's moments where Jose has shown an aggressive side to him. I think the most notable one is when the gang attacks Braithwaite Manor. Jose is the one basically all up in Catherine Braithwaite's face. Sure, Dutch pulls out his gun and even is the one that slams her against the wall, but Hosea does not shy away from questioning her, demanding answers, and has a demeanor basically telling her that everything that's happened within the last five to ten minutes, all your son's dying and your mansion on fire is all because of your mistake. As he says, boys are off limits, and now your entire bloodline is paying for that. I never liked you. Why'd you take the boy, Mrs. Braithwaite? You stole boys my Boys are liquor. off limits. You stole my horses. Ain't no rules in war, mister. Matthews. Yes, yes, that's it. <laughs> Where's the boy? I'm in the middle of another playthrough of this game, and I pointed this out in a recent video, but for the first time ever, I caught a camp interaction where Hosea stands up, draws his pistol incredibly fast, and pulls it out on Bill, who was annoying the shit out of him, and he threatens him to just leave him alone. So that also shows that he's not timid, shy, or even unwilling to defend himself towards people that could be considered friendly, people that are fighting for the same morals, values, or even his own subordinates as himself. With just these two instances, and the fact that we already know that Hosea is one of the original founding members of the Vanderlyn Gang, on top of, he's respected, he's wise, he does have his own great leadership skills, although a little different from that of Dutch, he is capable of being a loved, respected, and compassionate leader, all too willing to be brutal and aggressive whenever the time demands it. One other thing before we jump into what I think would happen, there's something we need to set straight. Characters such as Sean, and maybe to a degree Trelawney as well, may not even be an equation to this theory. This theory is reliant on the gang going up to the mountains after the Blackwater Massacre had taken place. An event that resulted in a massive law enforcement force, possibly supported by the presence of many Pinkerton agents, chasing after the gang. And it was in an effort to shake the law they went into hiding up in the mountains. Now I believe this was Dutch's decision with him thinking it'd be easy to evade capture by being covered by the harsh weather conditions. Which means that if this was Dutch's decision and Dutch in this theory is meant to die in Blackwater, the gang would never have went up into the mountains to begin with. However, if we were to give this the benefit of the doubt and say this was a collective decision and not just Dutch's, and we say they still went up into the mountains, 
The events that would definitely not happen is the gang's decision to both assault the Adriscoll camp up here and take the plans of robbing Leviticus Cornwall's train off of the Adriscolls, and this would remove two major pressures off the gang's back, which may have also made it easier for them all to slip away into obscurity. But the first one is the Vanderlyn gang and the Adriscolls' rivalry stemmed from a personal vendetta of both Colm and Dutch. With Dutch gone, even if Colm and his gang continued to honor the rivalry, the assault here wouldn't have taken place as it was Dutch's own idea to do so under the claim that Colm was up here for them. Are you sure about this, Dutch? Yes. We've both been through a lot recently. We hardly back on our feet yet. And the last thing we need is to get bushwhacked by Colm O'Driscoll. Let's go. I know you hate him, Dutch. He's here for us. I doubt that. No, you're just doubting me. The second pressure is, with a train robbery never taking place, or at least not committed by the Vanderlyn gang, Cornwall wouldn't put such a massive price on the head of Dutch, which may have resulted in the gang being a lower priority on at least the Pinkerton's wanted list. If the gang wasn't able to slip into relative obscurity and just disappear, then with the lack of funding or added pressure from Cornwall wanting some type of revenge, the breathing room and leisure needed to properly plan out and escape to the virgin lands of the west may have come into fruition a lot cleaner than any of us could have thought possible. Sure, the gang may still commit some cons or small robbing here and there within Valentine. The switch in leadership from Dutch to Hosea may not be so insane that people like Bill or even Arthur really would refrain from bullying the locals and Strauss would definitely continue looking for prospects at least, but out here in Valentine or not, I think the main goal would be moving back out west in the opposite direction. This is what Jose is constantly bringing up to Dutch's attention after all. As the game progresses, he reminds Dutch they're getting further and further from where they wanted to go. This is even said as early as Coulter. Covered our tracks, so now we wait a bit, and we go back to Blackwater, and we get our money, or we get some more money, and we keep heading west. But we're heading east. For now. For now. We got this. We're safe. This appears to be Hosea's primary objective, and I think he would do whatever he could to get the woman, Jack, and all the members with him who chose to come with him to this land as safely as possible. I think the priority would be trying to keep the entire gang together within the initial shock of Dutch's death, which is another thing that we got to take into account. If Dutch was to die in Blackwater, how would that impact the gang? Through the events of the game itself, we see how a massive death such as Hosea's impacts the rest of the gang members. I mean, it's a little muffled considering everything that happens immediately afterwards. Dutch goes more and more off the rails. He becomes much more ambitious in who he picks fights with and how he decides to initiate those fights. He manipulates the Indians. He starts a fight with the army. The gang gets stranded out in Guarma. Arthur's diagnosed with tuberculosis. There's so much going on that there's not proper time to reflect on the death of Hosea. Given all the recent events, it becomes almost like self-preservation for everybody else. The downtime to reflect on the passing of Hosea and the impact of him being gone isn't given to us. If Dutch was to pass away during Blackwater, I think that downtime would have happened a lot sooner. All the characters and the gang's overall position, I think would allow them to have that downtime to reflect on how big of a character and inspiration and motivation Dutch was as a figure and what they're fighting for and what they're actually doing. I think coupled with Dutch's death and Hosea's own mentality, which is a mentality we see more towards Clemens point where Hosea drops little tidbits of how he wishes things were different. Maybe he regrets not leaving this life behind, not coming back and living his final days with Bessie somewhere else. Considering this interaction that he has with John, where he basically tells John to stop being dumb, he's got a wife, he's got a family, take him and leave. <coughs> Good morning, Arthur. The thing is, John, the thing is we all gotta die. I know that. I, of all people, know that. Excuse me? We all gotta die, but you got the chance to live. Not just to live, to live for love. I got no goddamn clue what you're on about, Hosea. You're not as dumb as you act, John Marston. I don't understand. Be a man, John. It would suit you. I think ultimately that would have been Hosea's stance. 
if Dutch was to pass away in Blackwater, I think his priority would be to get all the gang members together, move out west, get everyone together, and say, hey, the writing is on the wall. Our time has passed. If you want to stay with me, by all means, feel free to do so. For protection, maybe because you just don't want to be alone, for some type of help or guidance, I doubt Arthur would even leave Hosea, so I think he would definitely stay by his side. But I doubt Hosea would claw and beg everyone to stay. I think he would try to reason with each and every single member, make them reflect and think about what they have, what they don't have, what they need, what they're looking for, and then tell them. You know, if you want to go, I wish you the best. I can help you, set you up, but this life is not long for any of us anymore. It's a mentality that's very similar to what Arthur does towards the end of the game, where he allows people to jump ship and leave him and leave Dutch, where he sees the fertility of trying to hang on to something that doesn't exist anymore. But I think that is what would happen if Dutch had died in Blackwater, and if Hosea was to take the reins from that point forward. Now, I really didn't mention Micah because I think one of two things would happen. Either Micah would die in Blackwater as well, or Hosea and Arthur would definitely blame Micah for everything that happened, ban him from the gang, or put him out to pasture and deal with them themselves. I think if Dutch wasn't around, Micah would be a much less of a nuisance and nowhere near as big of a problem. He may still try to kiss ass, but ultimately, with Dutch being dead and the gang trying to drop this lifestyle and causing more of a ruckus and problems for themselves, Micah would have no choice but to be dealt with and either sent on his way or put six feet under. But that is my take on what would happen if Dutch had died during Blackwater and Hosea took the reins from that point forward. Let me know what you think. If there's anything else you want to add to this theory or maybe I missed something, by all means, please feel free to share that down below. And if there's any other theories, conspiracies, or characters you want to see me cover in the future, please share that. Like always, my name is Cynic. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.